What you're looking at, depending on who you ask, is either a miraculous treatment in human history. Full length rotator cuff tear in my shoulder, it completely fixed it. No way. Completely fixed it. But I stood up with no pain in my spine for the first time in 14 years. Or a great scam that feeds a billion dollar industry. After several patients went blind following their injections. It sounded too good to be true and it, it was too good to be true. Or heart regeneration, which I do, completely experimental. Stem cells for the treatment of arthritis, completely experimental. Stem cells for vision loss, completely experimental. Stem cell technology is the most fabulous invention and the most controversial one in the past decades. From the historical treatment of cancer and making body parts in the lab. This is actually a heart valve that we've engineered. I mean, it sounds to me like you've built a heart. So while we teach the heart muscle cells to become heart muscle. To stem cell tourism and promotions by celebrities and endorsement, they take my own blood and put it into my skin. Cells, mesenchymal stem cells, injecting them to areas and, and getting some pretty fantastic healing. To the grandiose claim about this potential. We've had patients who were unable to speak, now speaking full sentences and telling us about the day that they were injured. As a stem cell researcher, once I was asked about the stem cell therapy and its safety. At the time, I was working with them in the lab and saw the amazing things they do. But this is different. We are talking about using them in people. So I started researching more about the stem cell therapies and I thought maybe I should wrap up everything in this video. So let's start with this question. What are stem cells? The story of stem cells starts here, in the late 19th century. Charles Darwin was famous for his evolutionary biology theory. He proposed that all species of life have descended from a common ancestor. In 1868, in Germany, a biologist by the name of Ernest Haeckel, who was a major supporter of Darwin's theory, drew a number of phylogenetic trees to represent the evolution of organisms from common ancestors, and called them stem trees. He also proposed that every cell in our body stems from a common cell, and he called it a stem cell. Right now, we know that the common cell that every cell stems from is the fertilized egg. The sperm from the male and the egg cell from the female fuse together and make a unique cell called zygote or fertilized egg, which has a unique genetic material. This cell would start dividing and make every cell in our body. We can more than 200 different types of cells. Every one of them has different shapes, sizes, and functions. Some can send signals to various places, some can defend the body from bacteria and viruses, and some of them can carry oxygen and nutrients everywhere. Making different cells with such variety is a complex process. The zygote first goes through multiple cell division to make a necessary pool of cells, and then it starts to differentiate into different cells and make three different layers. Each layer is gonna make a specific cells in our body through the differentiation process. For example, the ectoderm here would make the brain and the skin cells, the endoderm would make the liver and lungs, and the mesoderm would make the kidneys, bones, and blood vessels. Different discoveries were taking place in the 19th and 20th century, which were important in cell biology. From 1885 to 1950, scientists were trying to learn and advance techniques that we can grow and maintain the tissue or cells outside of the body, which developed to be one of the most sophisticated inventions in cell biology. So basically, we learn to isolate certain cells and grow them in a petri dish and study them. Other than this, for a long time, scientists theorized that all of the cells in the blood have a common ancestor in the marrow. But because of the limitation in the experimental methods, they couldn't prove that. But in the 1960s, James Till and Ernest McLeod, the University of Toronto and the Ontario Cancer Institute, identify the specific cells that could give rise to all of the cells in our blood. It's called hematopoietic stem cells. They observe two specific properties of these cells. One, they differentiate into more specified cells and make every type of cell in our blood. But at the same time, they can make more of themselves, which means they can also create a pool of stem cells for later if our body needs them. This was the first obvious definition of stem cells, and this is why this experiment is remembered as the discovery of stem cells. After this, scientists have started looking for other stem cells in different tissues that make other fully differentiated cells. And then, other stem cells were discovered in the coming years, like neural stem cells that give rise to the cells in our nervous system, or mesenchymal stem cells, which can make bone, cartilage, or fat cells. In 1998, James Alexander Thompson isolated the first human embryonic stem cells. 
The discovery of embryonic stem cells was so huge that changed the whole stem cell technology. As we said before, we can find the stem cells on specific tissues, which are called based on the location in our body. We categorize all of them under adult stem cells because we only can find them after development. However, embryonic stem cells are different from adult stem cells. After the zygote divide multiple times before they differentiate into these three layers, a structure called blastocyst forms. If you look closely, these cells that are located here are called inner cell mass. Thompson isolated these cells, which are called embryonic stem cells, so we can find different types of stem cells in different stages of life, but they have various properties. So embryonic stem cells are undifferentiated cells, and they have the potential to make all types of cells in our body. So we call them pluripotent stem cells. However, adult stem cells are less potent, and we call them multipotent stem cells, because they give rise to less diverse cells. After the isolation of human embryonic stem cells by Thompson, this happened. Embryonic stem cell research is immoral, illegal, and unnecessary. That is the destruction of human life. Help our economy recover. Since the isolation of embryonic stem cells would practically destroy the embryo, it ignited ethical and political controversies around abortion and religious beliefs. In a high-profile case, George W. Bush banned all funding for stem cell research. Culture that devalues life and believe as your president, I have an important obligation to foster and encourage respect for life in America and throughout the world. But pluripotent stem cells have great potential for treating many diseases since they can give rise to almost all the cells in our body. So at the time, scientists tried to figure some things out to access pluripotent stem cells. Therefore, in 2006, Shinya Yamanaka made pluripotent stem cells in a very sophisticated way. With this method, we can reprogram fully differentiated cells like skin cells to pluripotent stem cells, which have similar properties as embryonic stem cells. He called them induced pluripotent stem cells or IPSC. However, in 2009, Barack Obama revoked this ban, but this controversy was just about the research aspect of stem cells. There's an ongoing controversy over using stem cells as a treatment in humans. We're back now with the controversy over stem cell clinics. Earlier this week, the president's new pick to head the FDA was grilled by lawmakers about government regulation of rogue clinics. Okay, since we know about the stem cells, we can talk about the stem cell therapy. If fully differentiated cells in our body are damaged or died, then we are going to have problems. Now, if we have stem cells and we inject them into the site of injury, they can differentiate into missing cells and cure the injury. This is basically the whole idea behind a stem cell therapy. We have three different sources for harvesting a stem cells, and you find these terminologies over and over again. We can isolate the cells from the patient's own body. We can take the cells from other individuals and other species, which has the risk of immune rejection. So the ideal case would be autologous stem cells. However, even in this case, there is a controversy which I'm trying to explain in this video. There are different ideas about the stem cell therapy. One only comes from the commercial clinics, which sounds extremely positive. It's like a stem cell therapy is a miraculous treatment that can cure every problem in our body. Most of them come from testimonials by famous athletes, celebrities, and internet personalities. However, a stem cell therapy isn't FDA approved, and if you check the FDA site, they alert people about the stem cell therapy. They even warn that these therapies are not approved and it's not safe yet. Have you seen ads or attended a seminar for stem cell therapies that claim to be able to treat diseases like chronic joint pain, Alzheimer's, cancer, and more? Don't believe it. You may be told stem cells, including those from fat, amniotic fluid or umbilical cord, like cord blood or Wharton's jelly, are a miracle treatment. You may even hear they're FDA approved, but that is not true. None are proven to work to treat these conditions, and worse, some may cause harm. So this started a war between the clinics and the FDA. So the only stem cell therapy that FDA approved is related to using hematopoietic stem cells for certain blood disorders, such as leukemia and lymphoma. Therefore, most stem cell therapies are illegal in US and Canada. However, other countries are okay with the stem cell therapy. As a consequence, many patients would travel to other countries like Panama and Mexico, which concerns many scientists. 
and then use the word stem cell tourism to describe this phenomenon. So the main question is, are these stem cell therapies safe and effective? To answer this question first, we should ask why we trust other drugs in the market. So a drug that develops in the lab should go through preclinical studies in which the drug would test in vitro and in vivo. And you can find those scientific articles online. Then, if the data on animals show satisfactory results, it should be tested on humans. The studies on humans are done through clinical trials to generate data on the dosage, safety, and efficacy of the treatment on humans. Clinical trials have different phases with different purposes. If you want to find a specific clinical trials, you should go to clinicaltrials.gov and you can find the studies there. However, if you pay attention to the left, you can find that the listed clinical trials on this site have not been evaluated by FDA, but they should follow the FDA regulation policy in the US. Nevertheless, the FDA claims to protect participants in clinical trials and make sure they have reliable information before deciding whether to join a clinical trial. They claim that they are trying to protect the participant from unreasonable risks. Other countries regulate these clinical trials with their own systems, and the government has a final say if the treatments or drugs should enter the market. So in the US, FDA believes that stem cell therapy is not safe yet, but other countries like Panama and Mexico do not have the same restrictions. So how can we know that the stem cell therapy is safe and it would work? The answer to this question is pretty much hard because we see these testimonials with positive tones, but if you look at the literature, we can find inconclusive and even negative results as well. Just look at this study that reports a human brain tumor that was a complication of a stem cell therapy. They injected human fatal neural stem cells directly into the spine and the cerebral of the patient suffering from ataxia. Four years later, after the first treatment, he was diagnosed with a multifocal brain tumor. Molecular and cytogenetic studies showed that the tumor origin was in the patient. Microsatellite and HLI analysis proved that the tumor is derived from at least two donors. Another study published in the New England Journal of Medicine reported that a 66-year-old underwent a treatment at commercial stem cell clinics in China, Argentina, and Mexico. The clinic reported that the cells injected into the patients were mesenchymal, embryonic, and fatal neural stem cells. The patients came to the hospital with severe back pain and urinary problem. After different analysis, a tumor was revealed in the spine and the source of the cells was predominantly non-host cells. In addition, you can find numerous discrepancy in the results even with autologous bone marrow stem cell therapy. You can find a lot of positive feedback from a stem cell therapy in the media, but you can find negative stories too. For example, different patients who were treated by stem cell therapy at the US stem cell clinic went blind and sued this clinic, even though their chief scientists used the same positive language that other clinics use to promote this kind of therapies. Treated over 6,000 patients, we've trained over 600 practitioners, the safety is pretty solid. I think it's time to bring this type of therapy to the mainstream. We cannot wait anymore. And it would be a mistake to limit these therapies from patients who desperately need them. Answer these questions about the clinic and the work that's being done there, whether it's safe. Um, I'm going to ask you to meet with our PR people and continue to reach out to them for additional comments. And I'm going to ask you to turn the camera off. So does stem cell therapy work and is it safe? To be honest, I simply don't have any solid answer, and if anyone wants to have a stem cell therapy, they should educate themselves about the risk they are taking. I have a strong disagreement with the companies and clinics that offer stem cell therapies because I think they are not fully transparent with the patients, and they are not offering any scientific data except testimonials from famous athletes and celebrities, and they kind of don't talk about the negative side of current stem cell therapies. Let's talk about the huge controversy between FDA and the clinics that offer stem cell therapies in the US. The FDA claimed that if the clinics isolate the stem cells, they should inject them without any manipulations, and if they use enzyme and any processing in the lab before injections that would consider drugs. Therefore, FDA should regulate their market. But the clinics claimed since those stem cells are the patient's own cells, the patients should decide whether they want the treatment. My problem is that the stem cells are not drugs. They're completely independent entities, and they show different behavior in certain situations. So the question is, how these clinics would control stem cell behavior after injections? Who is going to say that these stem cells don't become a tumor in certain conditions, or who is going to predict which cell they differentiate into? 
For example, mesenchymal stem cells can differentiate into bone, cartilage, neurons, and fat cells. If you inject the mesenchymal stem cells into the eyes, how are they prevent them from differentiating into bone cells? A stem cell behavior can be controlled with different kinds of signals. Chemical signals, the signals from their environment or cell matrix interactions, and signals from other cells or cell-cell interactions. However, I do not see any of those strategies in the current stem cell therapies. Another point is adult stem cells reside in a specific location in the tissue, which is called the stem cell niche. This environment is rigorously regulated and controls the state and behavior of the cells. Now, in current stem cell therapies, the stem cells are isolated from their environment and cultured in the lab to grow and increase their population, which means they use petri dishes and 2D environments. However, naturally, the cells in our body live in a 3D environment. With improving cell culture techniques such as 3D cell culture and using biomaterials, the data shows that the properties of the cells in a 2D environment are hugely different from those cultured in a 3D environment. The other thing is that after isolation, the cells should be characterized to prove that they eventually are stem cells, which is a very expensive and time-consuming procedure. Therefore, which organization would regulate policies to ensure if the company is doing a good job and injecting the right cells into the patient? I'm asking you if you will ask the clinic to collect a sample of the stem cells they intend to use. You can freeze it and send it to me. I will analyze it for free and I will tell you what those stem cells are. And that will give you some indication about whether those stem cells are going to be dangerous or that they may be helpful to you. I know there are a lot of people who suffer from medical conditions that can be completely solved by stem cell technology. But even with all these positive results and testimonials, we can't say with all certainty that current stem cell therapy is effective and safe. So be sure about the amount of risk that you're taking before the treatment. Thank you for watching.